What do you think about taxes? Well, if you're like most people, then you think they are necessary, but you also don't like paying them, which is a problem. And when there's a problem, there's also a business opportunity in it, which led to the booming multi-billion dollar industry of tax havens, places that offer people and businesses alike little or no taxes to pay, places like the Cayman Islands and the Bahamas. But there's also a state in the US that's known as a tax haven because of its massive tax loopholes. That state is Delaware. As of the end of 2021, the state has 1.8 million companies incorporated there, with 335,406 total businesses formed in 2021 alone. For comparison, Delaware's total population is at 1.01 million, so it had 800,000 more businesses than it has people. And these businesses include 66.8% of Fortune 500 companies. Some examples of businesses incorporated in Delaware include Apple, Amazon, Google, Tesla, Walmart, Coca-Cola, JP Morgan Chase, Berkshire Hathaway, and you name it. But rather than saying Delaware is the home to 1.8 million companies, perhaps it's more accurate to say that this building is home to 1.8 million companies. This is the Corporation Trust Center or City Center, located at 1209 North Orange Street in Wilmington, Delaware. Because companies formed in Delaware are required to have a Delaware address, but obviously companies like Apple and Google don't have their head office located in Delaware, this building and some other ordinary looking buildings became that address, and are the home of 1.8 million companies on paper. So in this video, we will discuss Delaware's favorable corporate law, examine how Delaware's tax loopholes actually work, and also provide a step-by-step -step explanation on how to register a company in Delaware for yourself, if you've ever wanted to. Okay, so the story of Delaware's favorable corporate law actually began over 100 years ago, when every company in the United States had to be legally incorporated in the state where they conduct their business, and subject to the state's tax codes. While most states impose heavy taxes with tight regulations on businesses, a group of people serving as Delaware's public officials saw the opportunity for large profits to be made by becoming the preferred states for businesses to incorporate in. And thus, the 1899 Delaware's corporate law was born. The 1899 Act made Delaware a popular choice for businesses as it is easy to set up, reduces the restrictions and rules on corporate actions, and it promised to maintain a hospitable environment for businesses to operate in, unhindered by corporate taxes, regulations, and bureaucracy. These are all done with the use of the Court of Chancery which is the only US court that specializes and strictly deals in business issues. The court has developed a reputation for extremely fast trials and tends to be more favorable towards businesses. While the average court trial takes around 2 or 3 years to solve, the court of chancery can resolve a case within weeks or even days. And this very court is also the one that orders Elon Musk to follow his agreement to buy Twitter. That trial took place in Delaware because Twitter had its corporate registration there, and the trial finished within a few months. So it's not just low taxes, there are many factors that made Delaware such an attractive place for some of the biggest businesses in the world. Needless to say, in the 1900s, a flood of conglomerates took up this offer and the state earned so much money from taxes that it was able to pay off its entire state debt. Today, some states like Wyoming, South Dakota, Alaska, and Florida have offered their own version of business-friendly laws and lenient tax policies to incentivize businesses to stay. But so far, Delaware has emerged victorious. Also, an interesting fact to mention is that today, there are tons of incorporation service businesses in Delaware that specialize in making the incorporation process easier and provide attorneys for navigating laws and regulations. Some examples include Corporation Service Company in Wilmington, Incorporating Services Limited in Dover, and Harvard Business Services in Lewis. It seems like this incorporation business is one of the main sources of income for the Delaware state. Okay, so how does Delaware's tax loophole actually work? Basically, intangible assets like trademarks, copyrights, and leases are exempt from corporate income taxes. Although some creative accounting can stretch the intangible asset definition to way more than these three. 
Using this loophole, a company can set up a subsidiary in Delaware and transfers an intangible part of its business there, for example its trademark. Then the main company outside of Delaware pays money to the subsidiary in order to use their trademark. That main company can decrease the cost of royalties on its state returns in the state that it mainly operates, and it's done. You've just reduced your taxable income. To make this more understandable, let's consider a real-life example. In the 1990s, Home Depot, whose main company state is in Georgia, created its well-known mascot Homer. At the same time, the company also created a Delaware subsidiary, Homer TLC, to house its trademarks on its mascot, branding, and other types of intellectual property. Home Depot then transferred the right of using that intellectual property to Homer TLC, which reached 4% of Home Depot gross sales in 1999. Because Home Depot has transferred 4% of its gross revenue to its subsidiary in Delaware, and remember, intellectual property is not taxed in Delaware, this meant that Home Depot paid no tax on 4% of its gross revenue. 4% may sound absurdly low, but for a company like Home Depot, that 4% was equivalent to around $2 billion. Given that the average corporate tax rate is around 20 to 25%, Home Depot managed to avoid at least $400 million in taxes using the Delaware loophole. Bigger companies can probably avoid more. Now, I should warn you that any tax attorney will tell you that the system is a bit more complex than this. But this is the basics and should be enough to illustrate how Delaware's tax loophole works, without adding any complications or using too much law jargon. Okay. Now that we already know what kind of benefits you could get by setting up your business in Delaware, the next question is how do you set up a business in Delaware? Well, considering that it is the most business-friendly state in the US, setting up a business there is actually quite simple. Carl Levin, a retired senator from Michigan, has said that it's easier to set up a corporate in Delaware than obtain a driver's license. The first step is to choose a business entity and name your business. Generally speaking, there are four types of business entities, sole proprietorship, partnership, corporation, and limited liability company. There's not much difference between them, and any form of entity is allowed to incorporate in Delaware, so you can pick one adjusting to your conditions and needs. The second step is to choose a registered agent, a person or a business available during regular Delaware business hours to receive legal documents on behalf of the company. If your business is physically located in Delaware, then you can register to be your own agent. But if you're like most businesses, then you don't have a building in Delaware and you need to rely on an incorporation service. These are the ones that I mentioned earlier like Harvard Business Services that became the middleman between your company and the state of Delaware. If you're interested, the Delaware Division of Corporations official website has a list of registered agents that you can use as reference. The third step is to file a Certificate of Incorporation to Delaware's Division of Corporations, either sent by fax or mail. The certificate must include some basic information like the business bank account, the name of the entity, the name and the address of the registered agent, and the name, address, and signature of the person authorized to file the certificate. If you're a corporation, then you need to include who or what owns how many shares, and include the number of authorized shares and their par value. There are some complications or legal paperwork involved, but your registered agent should make it easier to navigate the formalities. And there you go. Once Delaware's Division of Corporations approve your certificate, then your corporation officially exists and is registered in Delaware. You've just followed the footsteps of some of the biggest companies in the world. This is Doverhill, and see you next time.